The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 10th, the fabulous Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out with those bulls and bears what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. Send an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a slightly mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow up 67 points. The S&P's up 2. NASDAQ 100's up 12. The Russell's down 14. Semis are up 40. Trannies are up 52. Gold's up 25 bucks. Silver's down 2 pennies. Slice recruit is off 7 cents. Natural gas is flat. And a 30-year treasury printed out 116.01. Our movers in the clubhouse, dollar-wise, the upside, it is Mettler Toledo International, 167 bucks, 13%. Fair Isaac up 50 Fifty-three bucks, four percent. Broadcom, twenty-seven bucks, two percent. Asthma Holdings, fifteen bucks, nearly two percent. And Thermo Fisher Scientific, a thirteen-point move, a little over two percent. Our shakers to the downside. Micro Strategy, fifty-six bucks, four and a half percent. Macrogenics, eleven bucks, seventy-four percent. Holy shnikey out there. Align Technology down nine bucks, three percent. Doc Ebo. It's down eight bucks or 17%. Toyota Motor is down three and a half percent, nearly an eight dollar move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers, but where are we going to begin? I tell you where we're going to begin. We're going to begin by, well, let's just uh, stay here on, on, this, uh, on this set of charts and then we'll switch over to the white background chart. So here we take a look at the daily time frame for the equity future contracts out here. What we're going to see in the ES Mini, you can see it's already attained the one uh, to uh, the, so trading above the one to one A to B equals CD price projection level. It has attained the 0.7 to 86 retracement of its last leg down. If we do get a bearish reversal candle right now, it's a bearish shooting star. It doesn't matter what it is at 11.09 in the morning. It matters what it is this evening at the close. But if we were to get a bearish reversal candle, that would be a Gartley sell pattern. And I don't know where the oscillator and change line is at the moment, but I would say a price target would be the top of the profile at 51.39 on a move lower. The NQ, it's it's also attained more than the one to one A to B equals CD. If it does generate a bearish reversal candle, it should at least pull back to test profile support. And that's at the 18089 level. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it's above the 1.272 A to B equals CD. It's up at the 0.786 retracement. It also needs a bearish reversal candle. And then that would suggest that price would pull back towards the 38, uh, 38780 area. In the case of the Russell 2000, right now it's a dark cloud cover candle. And if we do get a, uh, if it ends up being a bearish reversal candle, you can see it's attained the one to one. That would also be a Gartley sell. So it's really going to be dependent upon what the end of the session candles look like. If those are bearish reversal candles, folks, that will tell us that we've got some type of a top out there. Now, maybe just a top that lasts for a couple weeks. Maybe it's something more than that. 
What else are signals that suggest that we could see a top? Great question, and the answer to that comes from the New York Stock Exchange from its advanced decline oscillator. What we'll see here now, the advanced decline oscillator, is nothing more than taking the advanced decline line and taking the difference between its 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. When we do that, we get an oscillator. If we take a look at that oscillator, which is in the third section of the chart, or second from the bottom, what you'll see is a declining tops pattern. Whereas when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, we have a rising highs out there. Now, that's a divergence that uh, suggests to us that we should see some type, we could see some type of top. The question is the timing of it. When does that happen? So what we might want to do is we might want to go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Um, I don't have this planned or anything. I just kind of like go with the flow out there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up, because I don't know what the answer to this. I should know the answer to this, or we should know the answer to this. And that is what pattern are present on the New York Stock Exchange. So let's actually go ahead, the daily time frame charts, what I'm referring to. Let's go ahead. I tried to fire these up. It should be up shortly here. And uh, so on the daily time frame, are we trading around 18? We are 18.162. So this will take just a moment here to finish its population. Um, let me get rid of that. What I'm looking at here, when I take a look at this daily time frame chart, you know, yes, I see the more than the one to one A to B equals CD. I'm still on the ES screen. No, can't be. Oh, was I on the ES screen before? Shoot. Okay, so let me go. Let me kind of go back and forth. Sorry about that, John. I didn't realize that. But let me just make sure. And I don't know where I'm at. I mean, I do know where I'm at. I don't know where I was with regard to the screen. It doesn't show me that clearly. But here's that New York Stock Exchange. You take a look at the advanced client oscillator. You can see descending tops. That is panel number three, where we have rising price. And the question is, when does it get time? When does that tell us, you know, do we have a top out there? No. I'm not going to say that if we get a if we don't get something inside the New York Stock Exchange, I'll go back to those white background charts, a topping pattern. But we do inside the ESNQ, Dow and the Russell that we haven't topped out there. But ideally, what you would see is some kind of topping pattern in New York Stock Exchange as well. And you'll see here on the daily time frame chart, you can see the A to B equals CD pattern. You can see that we are above the one to one level. And uh, this needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. You could easily um, get a uh, bearish shooting star candle today. You could. We don't have that right now. On uh, the monthly, uh, weekly time frame chart, price is going to close. It appears it will close above that green oscillator and change line. And inside its all-time high swing point out there, that suggests that it wants to continue to move higher. And we look at the monthly time frame chart. Last month was a Rogeman indicator top. Price never even made its way back to support, which would be about 17265 out there. Uh, so we've had just a sideways move for really the last three months out there. You can take a look. You can see that trading range that has been established. So do we have a, a top uh, in uh, a, a top call just yet? No, we don't. But we've got those patterns to be paying attention to. As long as I'm over here on the white background charts, why don't we go take a look at what's going on under the covers? And as the debtors pointed out earlier when I had logged in, that they were taking a look at how the market was moving lower. They were looking at the intraday charts. And one of those intraday charts was a 30-minute chart. As so I put up all 30-minute time frame charts, ES, upper left, NQ, upper right. Dow lower left, Russell 2000 lower right. Keep it first. Take a look at the Russell 2000. It's traded uh, lower. It's the one that is weakest this morning. And what it is going to do here in about um, 16 minutes, it's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. That says the Russell should rally up to 2084. And look at the other three. They're all holding TD9 count breakout support. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back, and we'll take a look at this, and then we'll start taking a look at uh, requests. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let me get those 30-minute charts back up on our screen. So we had each of those 30-minute time frames. They each have Rhodes momentum indicator tops. You can see the bearish reversal candles. And right now, the ES mini continues to flirt with that 5241 level. If you were to see two consecutive closes below that, we'll just start with one consecutive close below that. 5225 would be the next area out there. The NQ, if it uh, fails at the 18218 level, I don't know where its next bottom is. I have to take a look at a larger time frame chart out there because I don't see another area of support. And inside the Dow Equity Future contract is 39.568. So these are areas most certainly to watch. We've got another 11 minutes in the trading session. So I don't know whether the ES is going to close below that level or not. What I do know is Russell 2000 in 11 minutes is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. So for the rest of the day, the cool thing about that is if we were to see a close below whatever the low is right now, the current low, uh, for this pattern is at 2064.70. A price could tick below that between now and 1130. But if it doesn't, if we do see a close below that on a 30 minute basis, well, then that tells you that the Russell is going to continue its move to the downside out there. Now, let's take a quick peek in at the other intraday charts out there. So if you give me a moment, we'll switch over to the multi time frame set of uh, charts out there with the daily being the largest time frame. So right now we can see the ES mini, the current candle session is um, both a bearish shooting star and, and a doji candle out there, graveyard doji. But I don't know what it's gonna be at day's end. Five hour chart is threatening to form a erosion indicator top. This candle doesn't complete till 2 p.m., only 11.20. Uh, it looks like we could, I don't know if that's gonna be, yeah, we, we would have a sell a D point pattern at 2 p.m. on the two hour chart, as long as this bearish engulfing candle remains. Uh, 120 minute chart has got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Its level of support, its next level of support to the downside would be 52.28. So 52.41 fails out there. 
I would say that 5228 becomes the next downside target. 5226 to 5228 out there and below that around the 5170 level is where I would be watching. Now, we don't see any kind of bottom signals, but price getting back to support in itself can be a bottom signal. So we'll come back. We can take a look at the other uh, equity instruments out there. But right now, we've got a few requests that have come in. So let's go ahead and get to those so I don't fall behind on that. And thank you to each of you who have sent in those requests. Nicholas uh, wrote in early this morning, and he would like to go ahead and short uh, GE. So we take a look at GE out here. Um, what do we have? You know, we still we have price pulling back. If this is only a counter trend move to the downside, Nicholas, where price should find support is at 162.36. So that's the first level of support that I would be watching. If price closes below that, then perhaps you've got something in that idea of a short. Now you'd have support at 154.57. That would be the bottom of the profile. But price was above its daily profile for more than two consecutive sessions. In order to signal to you and I that this is nothing more than just a normal movement pulling back to test support you've got to see a close below 162.36 that doesn't mean if it doesn't do that today that it's not a short but that's the area that you want to watch if we look at the weekly chart out here now this is really an amazing chart here for general electric and when i pull this back so first thing I would say to you is this is going to go ahead and form a TD9 count top pattern today. That pattern will complete um, next week out there. But I mentioned the TD9s, and so this is an interesting chart for that. A failed, a group of failed patterns. Look, you had a TD9 count pattern that went ahead and confirmed on March the 9th. That lasted for all of two days out there before that pattern was negated. We had another one that formed out here on January 12th. That lasted for two days before it was negated. We had one that formed out here on um, July 14th. That lasted two days before that was negated. We had another one that formed out here on May the uh, 6th. May, I'm sorry, May the 12th. And that failed the very following week out there. Here we have another TD9 count, March the 10th. That took a little bit longer to fail. That took three weeks to fail. You kind of get the gist out here that uh, I don't want to... Just because you've got a TD9 count top inside of GE, I always like to go back and take a look at the chart itself and see, did these patterns work in the past? Because if they haven't worked in the past, it's somewhat unreliable. Now, e even if that fails, do I have an A to B equals CD pattern out here? I would argue we do not. I don't see enough of retracement along that move higher. To quad, I don't see a 0.382 retracement on that move higher. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But I don't see an A to B equals CD pattern. The only top would be that TD9 count pattern. Now, maybe price pulls back to test support at the 154. 56 level but nicholas i would think that right now from the charts that we've looked at it's the daily that you want to keep paying attention to and it's at 162 36 level if we look at the monthly time frame chart it's trying to take out resistance from july of 2016 in order to do that it needs to close above 164 41 or 164 08 right now uh, so i don't know whether we'll, now that volume the volume on that month is big it was 768 million shares. Even last month, all that was done was 204 million shares. Volume, schmolium. It's now this is going to be about price. Does price close the month above 164.41? So other than a potential double top, so on the monthly, you could have a double top. On the weekly, you could have a TD9 count, but I've just shared with you why I'm somewhat skeptical about using that pattern out here. And the daily is the one that needs to prove itself to us. Is there anything else that we can come up with to assist Nicholas? I believe the answer to that question is yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have asked it. It's not good to ask a question that you don't know the answer to. Here, Nicholas, if we take a look at, so there's been a gigantic rally out there. Now, there was this one drop to the downside out there. I don't know if that was an earnings thing or what have you. But as I pulled this chart back, we go into December of last year. Come on, work with me, would you? As we go back into December of last year, what we'll see on a 65-minute time frame, the reason I use 65 minutes, folks, is because it divides equally into a 390-minute day. Therefore, each bar that we look at is the exact same length of time. What we can see on that move higher, price never was able to bust through, close below a TD9 count breakout level. So I'm going to assume, even though, in fact, it did do that out here, uh, that was on the trading day of uh, April the 2nd, out there. I'm assuming it was earnings or what have you. And then price continued to move back up. Well, guess what? Right now, as we, oops, that mean to do that. 
meant to do this. As we speak, prices testing a breakout level. And that's at 163.97. So if on a 65 minute time frame, I just kind of put this together with the daily for you. If at 1140, it's another 15 minutes from now, we see a close below 163.97. That would be a hint that you could be at the beginning of a change in trend out there. Now, of course, that's on a 65-minute basis, and it doesn't take away from still that daily time frame. But if you wanted to get an early jump in on that short out there, then you still have to watch that 162.36 level. So those are the time frames. Those are the levels to be watching. And, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. When we come back from this break, and we're going to turn over the charts right now, but I've only got about... 20 seconds or so and it's for jimmy d inside the tiger's den he wants to take a look at byon which yesterday jimmy formed a roads momentum indicator bottom so you've got a bottom you've got i see a wave number seven bottom on the uh, daily time frame the weekly price is pulled back to a breakout area at the 1501 level i don't have anything for you on the monthly time frame what byon should do is rally up to its oscillator and change line that's at 1812 if price can close above 1812, we should see a move to 2007 to $21 even steeper. A close above 21 tells you that the move was not a counter trend move and should make its way to 2239. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tiger, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Back, uh, folks, let's move on to our next request out here. This is from uh, Jimmy D inside the Tiger's Den. It's uh, for ticker symbol ENVX, NOVIX uh, Corp out here, which right now is just simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now, this is a bearish structured profile, uh, Jimmy. We are below the center of that profile. Odds favor move back towards support, which right now is between 781 and 806 out there. Uh, we've uh, traded above yesterday's high, below yesterday's low out there, and we're uh, still below yesterday's yesterday's low so we're going to kind of go with that signal that price is likely to head lower and a test support between 781 and 806 that's a daily time frame that uh, call is um is supported by the weekly chart right now and if the last week we had price close above 896 that was the top of its profile right now that's suggesting that was just a one hit wonder if we do close the day above 896 we would change that tune and say we have a weekly profile change in trend out there so watch 896 as well and the monthly time frame this month price so far has gotten up to the bottom of its profile and it rejected that level so we do know that on the weekly and the monthly time frame we're dealing with some profile resistance areas out there the daily time frame it's got that bullish structure profile and it's suggesting a further move lower if we take a look at an intraday chart to see if there's anything out here to assist us here is the 60 minutes so this is helpful 60 minutes i don't want 60 minutes so i want it 65 so let me see if we still have that same type of a pattern out there and we do not so, um, but what I can share with you is that if price does close below this low from 14.55 in the afternoon on May the 7th, and that's at 8.48, that's a bullish hammer candle, that would generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's any signal information out here to assist us with, and that's got a TD9 count bottom. So this is suggesting... Uh, right now, Jimmy, if you see a close below 841 out there, you should expect and anticipate lower price for ENVX. So hope that helps you out, and uh, best of luck to you uh, with this trade. G-Man wants to take a look at URNM. So let's go over, take a look at those charts out here, see what they are doing. And as we look at the daily time frame, uh, we've got right now a consolidation with inside its daily profile. That's between 5620 at resistance and all the way down to 5104 as support. Let's open up the daily time frame see what else we can find out out here so we know that price ran into profile td9 count breakdown resistance it's got almost up to it at 5701 so gee man that would be a critical level that you'd want to see price close above at some point in time to suggest that this wants to rally even further i do see an a to b equals cd pattern to the upside price let's see so the swing point had volume of 1.4 million shares when it was passed it was with 634 million, 634,000 shares out there. So 634,000 versus 1.4 million. So much lighter volume. Uh, today could be bar number eight. We're not even going to go into that because it's not even the high of the pattern at this stage out here. So I don't have much other than what seems to be uh, somewhat of a just trading with inside profile. So what I can share within the daily time frame is support is about 53.99. If you close below that, 51.04 would be game. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, looks like you're going to get bar number eight this week. We know that on a, a TD9 count, it can be bar eight, nine, the bar following nine, as long as there's a high in one of those. Well, this is going to be the high, bar number eight. Now, that also says that this pattern may not complete its top for the next couple of weeks out there. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. That's at 53.90. That is a, a bullish signal out there, so nothing bearish. If we look at the monthly chart, which had a TD9 count and Rosemont indicator top, price is trading above the top of its profile, 53.79. So that's interesting. Now, maybe it gives that level up, but that's a bullish signal right now at 11.34 in the morning. And it's still a bullish signal on the weekly time frame chart. And on the daily, it's just kind of uh, dealing with resistance at the top of the profile. Gee, man, I don't know that there's much more that I can provide uh, to you on that. So I do hope that that review assists you with your thinking. Uh, Jimmy D also wanted to take a look at the real real out there. R-E-A-L is the uh, ticker symbol. And as we take a look at it, uh, it has a Rosemontum indicator um, 
uh, pattern that is present. And what it well, actually, I take this back. It already has Roach momentum indicator top. Let me open up the chart. So you can see that price was moving higher uh, on May the 6th, doing it with less relative energy. And the very following day, we get that bear sash candle. So resistance is now the high of that pattern. And that is at 435. So, Jimmy, that's your resistance level. We saw that that, was that swing point, by the way, had volume of 3.1 million shares. It was tested yesterday with 2.8 million shares. So now you got a daily swing point that was tested and rejected on light volume. You've got a Rhodesman Dominicator top out there. But price still is above the top of its daily profile and its oscillator and change line. So Stevie's got to go with somewhat of a neutral signal out there. If price closes below 407, then we could be looking at move to 361 to 379. Let's see what the real real deal is when it takes a, when we take a look at its weekly time frame. And the weekly time frame is muy bueno. It is trading above the top of its profile at 410. If it closes above that, that gives you a another bullish profile change in trend signal. We're trading above the top of the monthly profile out there with no topping pattern that is in place. So that suggests that it wants to move higher. So this is really all about the daily time frame which has generated tops it did it four or five days ago out here tested rejected that yesterday but it's still holding up pretty well and in order to continue to do that it needs to continue to close about 361 if it doesn't do that then we'll see 310 out there so i like it on the weekly i like it on the monthly you're just dealing with uh <clears throat> A little bit of a timeout, I think, on the uh, daily time frame. So, Jimmy, thanks so much for all those requests. Much appreciated. Ronan, inside the Tiger's Den, would like to take a look at FLNG out there. So that's Fling. And uh, Fling is having a nice day. It's had a nice week out here, that's for sure. Widest ranging bar in quite some time going into a big wide ranging bar. So Flex LNG. Bar number seven, I don't see any kind of a topping signal at all in the daily time frame. It should continue to move higher. You could get a TD9 count top that forms between Monday and Wednesday of next week. When we look at the weekly time frame, price has gotten back to a wide-ranging bar out here that was back in February 9th. The volume on that down move was 3.7 million shares. So far this week, we have done 1.3 million shares. Does that matter? Hey, it's worth paying attention to. But right now, I'd say, no, it doesn't matter. If we take a look at the weekly chart, a close today above 27.42, and I'd have to say the odds of that happening are pretty darn good out there. That'll generate a profile change in trend signal and suggest higher price. Higher price to where? Excellent question. I would have to go with 31.22 as its next uh, price target level. That's the monthly oscillator unchanged line out there. But pay attention to the daily because you are bar number seven today. Let me just open this chart up, see if there's, I don't think there's an A to B equals CD pattern, but let me just take a quick peek and see if there is. Yeah, there probably is out here. And so if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would go ahead and generate a sell the D point top. Daily price target is 3044 to the upside. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, you're asking where it's headed. It's headed higher. Now, the target is 3044, Ronan. I am not saying that that's where price is going to get to. But it could. So 3121 as well, but that's a monthly time frame chart. I think it moves higher, and uh, pay attention to it Monday through Wednesday of next week. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, up, folks. Uh, let's get to, I uh, got a request that came in by email from Mimi. Mimi would like to take a look at the GDX. She'd like to understand their profiles and a hold from a long position there let's see if there was anything else that came in um and the answer is no i don't see anything else by email okay so let's take let's rip apart the uh, gdx for you mimi it's a uh, testing a uh, prior swing point that was a roadsman to indicator top out here that's from the trading session of uh, april the 12th the volume on that candle session was 71 million shares yesterday we were up into it with 30 million shares today so far we're up into it with 10 million shares so lighter volume as price comes in uh right now you've got a test rejection of a swing point high out there i don't know what's going on with my system here so that's not the greatest but you are trading above its green oscillator and change line you are trading above profile level so it's not like it's a sell it's not like it's a short but you are up at a resistance level that is for sure um and I don't see any kind of a top, but a double top can, in fact, be a top out there. So we certainly want to be paying attention to that. If price does move lower in the GDX, I'd watch for support at 34.96 or thereabout. If that fails, 34.30. Now, that's the daily time frame. Let's go see what's going on on those longer term time frames, because the daily, in essence, could just simply be noise. Well, if we look at a weekly time frame chart, it has a TD Nank out breakdown resistance level, 35.81. Guess what? We've hit that this week. Last time we were up here was the week of April the 12th, 180 million shares. This week, so far, we are at 90 million shares. Um, so, again, we're moving higher with lighter volume, but you're up against resistance. So two resistance levels. One on the daily was the uh, uh, test of that prior tie. And on the weekly, a TD9 count breakdown resistance level out there. Prices above profile, prices above the green oscillator and change line. Not necessarily a reason to sell. Maybe tighten your stops out there that would certainly make a lot of sense and on a monthly time frame we're trading above all resistance out there we are trading into well we're trading into a candle a bearish engulfing candle from may of 2023 and that uh, sets up a resistance level which at 3626 out there but is that a reason to sell the answer to that question is no not that i see but let's look at some short-term time frame charts mimi let's start by looking at the 30 minute what do we have here in a 30 minute time frame chart and the answer is not much um, 
see the EFG. I see a seventh wave move top where price is simply pulling back and testing support. If price were to close below 35 19, that would tell us we want to head or it wants to head lower. Let's take a quick peek at the 65 minute time frame chart, see what signal we have out here, if any. And um, I'm not even to go with wave number seven there. I don't have any kind of a, well, I don't have any kind of a signal as we speak just yet. So the intraday charts are not suggesting doing a whole lot out there. But Mimi, the reality is that um, one of the things that you and I know is that, and we'll do this up here, let's put up uh, gold. Let's actually switch over to the intraday charts for gold. So if you give me a moment, we're going to move over here and take a look at uh, the uh, I'll put, right now. It's got the ES mini, but I'm going to put up the June contract for gold so we can take a look at it. And the point, Mimi, that I was going to make is there is a strong directional correlation between the two. That doesn't mean that they don't diverge every now and then for a day or two. But for the most part, it is a strong directional correlation out there. So in order to say you want to possibly... And I'm not saying you said you wanted to short um, the GDX out there, but we are saying it's getting up towards a resistance area. Well, you'd want to see a clear top inside of uh, Goldilocks as well. So that's why I wanted to pull these charts up just to see what kind of signals we have, if any, for their intraday time periods. And then just discuss that. So I know that wasn't necessarily the question, but it is the uh, proper thing to uh, do if we're going to evaluate what's the message of the GDX. So as these charts populate, a five-hour – so on a daily time frame, by the way, if price is able to close above its green oscillator and change line today. So I'm going to give you that number. It's at 2366. If price closed about 23.66, odds favor move to 24.20. If that unfolds, odds favor that the GDX will also trade higher. If we look at the gold contract for the five-hour time frame chart, no topping signal here. Four-minute, four-hour chart, no topping signal. 120-minute uh, chart, no topping signal. Now we get into the shorter-term time frame charts. The answer is yes, I see topping signals, roads meant to indicator tops, and so forth. What I'm noticing here on the 30-minute time frame is that a TD9 count pattern is going to confirm at 12 noon so long as price closes below 2374.50. And it looks and we're 2372.30. So I don't know whether it's going to close below that. But if it does, you're going to have a confirmed TD9 count bottom. And I would suggest that uh, gold should uh, rally, rally towards 2378 to 2383 out there. So that's kind of a, a larger assessment of the GDX, as well as what's going on inside of Goldilocks. So Mimi, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for taking the time to put in a request out there. Let me just see if anything else has come in uh, by email. And the answer is I don't see something. I think there was something that Tiger said. Yeah, Dunk, oh, TGB for Danny. So let's move over to uh, take a look at Taseko Mines. Let's uh, pull up its charts out here, TGB. This will take a moment to populate. Uh, we're also going to take a look at um, uh, Mosaic, MOS, the ticker symbol out there. We've got a request to take a look at Tesla, TSLA, for McGuppy. So we take a look at the Seiko Mines. What I see out here, uh, Danny, uh, Dan from New York, uh, go Rangers out there. Uh, it's just a consolidation with inside its profile levels. That's between 235 and 262. If I look at a weekly time frame chart, it has a TD9 count top that would be negated today if price were to close above 261. We're 260. So I don't know where it's going to close today. But I would watch that level out there because if, in fact, we get, uh, Dan, a uh, close above that level, the uh, weekly chart will turn into basically a full-out bullish mode out there. And the monthly chart, I don't see anything wrong with the monthly chart out there other than price getting back to a prior swing point. Let's check in on that. That's this swing point out here uh, from uh, June of 2021. June of 2020, May of 2021, that was a year ago, 70 million shares. And last month we came into it with 74 million shares. So 74 million versus 70 million, that's really what you like to see. Now that was suggesting that we should see that high retested. The high out there I'm referring to is $2.67. This week did we get up there? We got to 266. So we didn't actually test that high out there. So we like what we see in Seiko Mines. You'd like it more with price to close above uh, and negate that weekly TD9 count. But right now in the daily, you just have a consolidation. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at Mosaic. MOS is the ticker symbol out here. Let's see if we can get that to populate for us. Um, I'm sure that we can. 
Let me check this out here. Can we take a look at Palantir? Yeah, so we'll be able to get to Palantir as well, P-L-T-R. Uh, but first, we're going to take a look at Mosaic. So I look at Mosaic. Um, so this has really struggled today and yesterday, but specifically today, price tested and rejected the bottom of that weekly profile, 3014. And we're trading below the red oscillator and change line. If Mosaic closes below 29.54, it's a suggestion that it wants to go back after its uh, swing point from May the 2nd out there. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, this will be week number two below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. It negated a TD9 count bottom. It's uh, traded below its red oscillator and change line. Uh, Mosaic says I want lower price. Now on a monthly time frame, you could end up getting a TD9 count bottom between this month and the next two out there. But right now it's trading below profile support. I'm going with Mosaic. Looks to me like it wants to trade lower. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at Tesla and Palantir to close out the show. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's take the charts here for uh, Tesla. See what it is uh, doing out here. We've got Tesla right now that's just consolidating with inside its daily profile. That profile has supported 162.83, resistance at 174.84 on a weekly basis. Uh, price is trading below its oscillator and change line, if it, uh, and it's red. If it closes below 169.74, we should see it move to 165.02. That's the bottom of its profile. If we get below 165.02, we likely head to 144.38. That's the bottom of its monthly profile out there. So you could be, just simply because we're consolidating in the daily, this could be getting ready to set up the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside we probably can also make the opposite 
um, conclusion, A to B equals C dependent on the downside. So until the consolidation of the daily uh, profile resolves itself, we really just simply won't know. So that's what I see when I take a look at the Tesla. I would say pay attention to a 65-minute chart. This is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. It'll do that at 1245. So at 1245, uh, and that doesn't mean that we can't start rallying now. I'm just saying that's that would be when the pattern itself would complete. Bar number nine is already in. That would suggest a rally up towards 175.62 uh, out there with regard to Tesla. Let's go take a look at Palantir, see what Palantir is uh, doing out here. And uh, Palantir is what? So it completes a TD9 count top. It does on the bar following bar number nine out there and then it just simply takes off to the downside so there was a warning ahead of time as it had that nice rally to just simply uh, be cautious out there because that very next day things gap down now what price is doing in palantir right now it's testing td9 count breakout support at 2066 now if price closes below that it's not necessarily curtains but if price closes below the swing of april 19th and that low out there is uh, 2033 it'll negate a td9 count bottom and that'll definitely suggest lower price lower price could be between 17 and 1796 that's uh, profile levels on the weekly time frame out there uh, oh I can also see it's coming down into this gap so you could see a move to at least 1976 or maybe even you get all the way down to 1787 folks uh, and all the mothers out there have a uh, terrific uh, Mother's Day on Sunday uh, thanks for all that you do uh, us men we wouldn't be here without you so we love you. Have a happy Mother's Day and everybody else out there. Have a fabulous uh, weekend, and I look forward to seeing you back here on Monday at 11 a.m. sharp. Take care. Be safe out there.